Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hi, Granny Zabner. I believe that's our ring. Ah. Oh. Frigidaire presents, as its Christmas greeting to you, a special broadcast of the new Lum and Abner show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Lum and Abner are bringing you their traditional Christmas story. And because of its unique nature, our program will be presented without interruption. But before we begin, here's a very brief message for the men, folks. If you're still wondering what to give that favorite lady of yours for Christmas, your Frigidaire dealer can help you. You know how you welcome anything that makes your work easier and more interesting? How you like to be the owner of something everybody admires? Well, women are like that, too, about things they can use. So for a really welcome Christmas present for your wife or mother or married daughter, choose a Frigidaire home appliance. There's still time to order, or if your dealer can't make delivery on just the model you want, ask about Frigidaire's gift certificate plan. So give your lady a beautiful Frigidaire refrigerator. There are many different types and sizes. Give her a Frigidaire electric range, so cooking will be fun from now on. Give her a Frigidaire automatic washer to free her forever from the work of wash days. Or give an automatic electric dryer. Yes, Tie a red Christmas ribbon on any one of these Frigidaire Happy Home Appliances for your favorite lady, and man, how she will love you for it. And now Frigidaire, a division of General Motors, takes you on a Christmas visit to Pine Ridge. And as we look in on the little community, a picture of complete peace and contentment greets our eyes. It's a clear, still evening... It's Christmas night, and the whole countryside is wrapped in a clean white blanket of snow, which has fallen rather heavily all day long. Here and there, along the deserted streets of the little village, we see an occasional home where the lights of a Christmas tree in the front window still twinkle in the dark of night. In the distance, we hear the bells of a sleigh as it cuts through the snow, and closer to us, we hear the spirited voices of some youthful carolers as they fill the air with Christmas melody. Their song sings its way into the parlor of the Peabody home, where we find Abner, Lum, Ben Withers, and Ezra Seastrunk. So I says to Miss Quincy, well, sure, it's high, but you try to get a Christmas tree any place else for less money, and wait, I... Wait don't... a minute, Abner. Do you hear that? Huh? That's singing. Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I bound you them young'uns that sang at church this morning. Yeah, open the window so as we can hear them better. Just open the window, Abner. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Doggy, look at that one little one out there. <laughs> I bound you, he ain't over six years old. Sounding joy, sounding joy, sounding joy. He sounding joy. Well, <laughs> that was just fine, boys. That was awful pretty. Yeah, ask him to sing another, Abner. Uh, we'd just love to hear you sing another, and if you don't mind. Oh, I hope they say Noel. There's my favorite. Well, now, the one I've always liked best is oh, that... Oh, wait a minute, Lum. I believe they got ideas of their own. There, there that's the one. That's it. Well, keep quiet so we can hear it. Then.
Yes, they sure are pretty. Oh, yeah. Makes you feel good to hear something like that, don't it? That kind of warms the heart. Yes, sir, they must have been practicing that and pretty good the way they sung it there. Oh, there's a pretty one. Well, there they go on their way. Hey, look at them, Ben. How's that of her? See the way the moon's shining down on them? Don't that look sort of like a picture on a Christmas card? Yes. Yes, it does. Reminds me of a card I received from Myrtle Travers of Mount 81 year. Card which I have always treasured highly. Uh, we should close the window, Abner. You feel a draft on my feet. Ain't been a feeling my level best here late. Well, all right. I just hated to shut out the music. Hated to shut out the music. I don't blame you, Abner. I'm sure that's just what we do too often, sort of shut the music right out of our lives. Yeah, uh, well, let's see here. What was we talking about here? Well, uh, Ms. Quincy was kicking about the price of trees this year, and you said... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We ought to be talking about prices and business and all that stuff. We got plenty of time the rest of the year for that. This is Christmas. Yeah, yeah, Lom's right. Uh, we ought to be talking about Christmas. Uh, what'd you get this year, Ezri? No, sir. I don't like to say nothing again, Grandpa Masters, but I give him a three dollar and seventy five cent tie rack, and you know what he give me? A forty nine cent pair of socks. <laughs> Is that all them socks cost? Mm, yes, sir. Well, I'll be dead blame. That's what he give me too. <laughs> Here, here, you, you fellas still don't get what I'm talking about. What a gift costs ain't got nothing to do with Christmas. What I meant was, well, we oughtn't to be just sitting here talking about Christmas. We ought to be do, doing something about it. Maybe we ought to be doing what them youngins was doing, singing Christmas carols. Us? <laughs> Lord, Lord. We're too old for such as that. Well, what's age got to do with it? The spirit of Christmas is for everybody, young and old. We sort of turn it over to the children, but we ought to enjoy it with them. Well, yeah, I reckon you're right. Somehow or other, it just ain't seemed like Christmas to me this year. Seems like we're missing something, or, well, I don't know. I can't explain it. Come on, let's just try a few songs. Might just do us good. Well, I, I don't know if I ought to be tramping around this year's snow. I, I ain't been a feeling my level best here lately. Oh, I, I don't mean go outdoors and sing. <laughs> Lord, I, I wouldn't want to flick voices like ours on nobody else. I mean, just do it right here. Oh, well, I reckon we could. Our neighbors ain't home today, so they can't object. <laughs> Or to have a songbook, I reckon. Ain't but a couple of them carols that I know by heart. Well, my favorite right is Noel. Abner, why don't you call Mrs. Peabody in from the kitchen and have her play the organ? Yeah, that's a good idea. Get Elizabeth in here to chord for us. That might help us get a little closer to the tune. <laughs> <laughs> or wait a minute, Sister Simpson's out there. Get her. She plays the organ over at the church. Well, now, I'll tell you, it ain't much use calling either one of them. I was just out in the kitchen a minute ago, and them women folks ain't even halfway done with the dishes yet. Hmm. They, they ain't? Well, what have they been doing out there all this time? Oh, I don't know, Ezra. I just don't know. They just had to do dishes for 14 people. <laughs> Women are just natural-born slow, I reckon. Well, Abner, I wouldn't criticize them too much. Them's the things that women enjoy, cooking, doing dishes, and all that. Oh. <laughs> a dog is they sure must, the way they insist on hanging around out there all the time. They spent might nigh three days out there cooking up this dinner. You'd think they'd want to get the work done and get out of there, but no! They just want to well, stay. Personally, I'm an unmarried bachelor like Lum, but I feel that if they enjoy that type of thing so much, they should be permitted to do it. <laughs> After all, it's not every week that they get to prepare a big dinner like this afternoon. Of course not. Something like this is a nice change for them. Yeah, well, I'll see if they ain't about dead with them dishes out there. Miss Simpson! That sister Simpson. I will say there's one thing I don't understand about the fair sex. And that is why the women folks insist on getting the kitchen so unbearably hot. Ben, I wondered about that same thing myself. Seems like every time a batch of women get together in a kitchen, first thing they do is get the temperatures up to where a man would suffocate to death. 
Hey, Miss Simpson. Well, I know last Thanksgiving, my woman and her two sister-in-laws got that there kitchen of iron so hot, it never cooled off for two days. <laughs> hey, Sister Simpson, come in here a second. Well, what do you want, Abner? Don't you know I'm out here helping you, woman? Yeah, well, Lom here wants to sing. Well, go ahead. That's all right. It won't bother us none. Well, we want you to play the organ for us, Miss Simpson. Oh? See, I thought it'd be sort of nice if we gathered around the organ and sung a few Christmas carols together. <laughs> sort of get in the spirit of things. Make it seem more like, oh, I don't know, more Christmassy. Come on, Miss Simpson. Get over to the organ. Oh, uh, land sakes, Ben, I can't play nothing now. My hands is all wet. Got dishwasher all, water all over them. Well, dry them on your apron, Sister Simpson. Just come on, we need you. Uh, well, I oughtn't to be taking the time right now. That fair floor ain't been swept or nothing done yet. Oh, well, forget about that. That can wait. Yeah, this is Christmas. Of course, now, if nobody likes the idea, I just thought, oh, well, forget it. Oh, uh, no, sir, you got a right good idea there, Lum. A uh, little singing won't hurt none of us. Come on. Oh, well, uh, my favorite right one is Noel. <laughs> uh, let me pull the bench out for you, Miss Simpson. Oh, I'll get it. Can I have me pump the pedals for you? Let her pump them herself, Ben. She knows just how to do it to suit herself. Been doing it for years. Uh, say, ain't y'all got any uh, songbook here with the carols in it? I believe there is one around here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. To wait, I'll go ask Elizabeth. Oh, never mind. I know most of them myself. What do you want to start off with? What do you say, Lum? No, oh, I don't know any of them. Might try a kind of an easy one to limber up on. No, I, I know a good one. Noel. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. Somebody with a good, stout voice better stand next to Abner so he don't get that too far off key. I can sing just as good as anybody here. You've heard me at church. I keep right up with the best of them. Fact is, sometimes I come out clean ahead of them. <laughs> well, all right, Abner, stop bragging on yourself. Let's decide on something here. Ben, what do you general sing, bass or altori? Yes. <laughs> Well, what I figured. Well, somebody's got to carry the lead, because I'm sort of a low bass myself. Well, I'll carry the lead. All right. It's an awful chance to take. <laughs> you help him out, Ben. Right. All right, come on. <laughs> yeah, let's start. Yeah, get the pump in there, Simpson. Well, all right, but you ain't told me what you're going to sing yet. Oh, oh, sure, that's right. Yeah, well, let's see now. Oh, I just happened to think of one. No, well. <laughs> There's a rather nice song about the deck in the halls with holly, one thing and another, but I don't know it. There's one part that goes, um, tra -la 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 -la, tra -la -la -la. Those are the only words I'm sure of. Well, here, I can't pump this thing all day. How about this? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, sure. Is that the no well? Well, come on, Ben. Get in here close. Fight. Come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of angels. Oh, come. That was all right. A little rusty, but all right. And uh, how about Noel now? <laughs> Miss Simpson, you played that highly excellently. Oh, I can't play so good, Ben, but uh, I just do the best I can. Well, let's see now. Who's got another subject? Noel is nice. How does the uh, little town of Bethlehem start out? Oh, let me see now. Hey, that sort of starts the way Noel starts out, I believe. Yeah, that's it, Sister Samson. You know, this seems more like Christmas to me now. The trouble with most of us is we just sit around at Christmas time and take it for granted, you might say, and forget the real meaning of it. What we ought to do is go back and read the story of the first Christmas again. Hey, wait a minute, Mom. I believe that was a phone ringing a minute ago there. Yeah, go ahead and answer that. Yeah, uh, soft pedal organ, uh, Miss Simpson. Hello. Hello. Is that you, 
you, Abner. Well, for the land sakes, Grandpappy Spear. Well, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Grandpa. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you, Abner. Uh, say, why don't you and your woman, Charity, come on over here? We're sort of sitting around singing some songs. Yeah, well, I'd love to. I know it's kind of late to be asking anything like this, Abner, but do you reckon you and Lum could go out to the old Gaddis place with me? Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Well, law me, Grandpa, that's a good ways out in the country. And sides, ain't nobody living out there. That house burnt down two or three years ago. Well, there's a family out there staying in the barn right now, and they could sure use some help. They need some vittles and something to keep them warm. Doc Miller's on his way out there now. Well, for the land's sake, what's wrong? Uh, who are they? Well, I'll tell you all about it later. Can you go or can't you? Why, sure. Er, now, wait, I better ask Lom. Hold on a minute. Hey, uh, Lom, I sort of hate to ask you this, but... Grandpap wants us to round up some groceries and blankets and stuff and told them to somebody clean out to the old Gaddis place. What do you mean, hate to ask me? Come on, let's get going. Now Christmas is beginning to mean something. <laughs> Put in another loaf of bread, Abner. Yeah, yeah. And some more of them apples. Well, now, Lum, we don't want to make this too heavy. Don't forget, we got to tote this quite a ways tonight. Well, leave them out, then. How come Doc Miller went out there? Well, Grandpap never said. Say, maybe you're right, Lum. Hand me another batch of them apples. Well, Ben, I'll get this stove back to you as quick as we can fix that family up with something else to keep them warm. Well, that's all right. Let them keep it. Just tell them to be careful when they pour the coal oil in. It leaks a little right here. Have you got plenty of coal oil? A full can of it. And much obliged, Ben. Well, now, Ezra, you sure you folks won't need this blanket? It's mighty cold these nights. No, 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 no. You, you take it, Abner. Uh, put it with the ovens you got there. Well, this is an awful good one. Well, anybody who's staying in the barn needs awful good ones. Say, Lom, I just hear they're expecting a baby out there. You reckon that's true? A baby? Oh, my goodness alive. Come on, Abner. We better get on our way. And thus it is that we find three old fellows burdened with gifts, trudging along through the snow on the road which leads from Pine Ridge out into the countryside. Lum, Abner, and Grandpappy Sears on a real Christmas mission. Are you sure we're headed right now, are you, Grandpap? Yeah, yeah, I know this is the way. Doc Miller rode his horse over here. You can see his tracks there in the snow. Yeah. Well, it must be the old Gaddis place then. Well, that's where it's at, all right. That's where that barn's at, are the words. That's all that's left of the place, just the barn. Well, Doc says it's due east from that road where we turned off. Due east? Well, yeah, let's see now. Which way is east? I ain't paid no attention to the directions here. Wait a minute. Whereabouts is the east star? There it is, right ahead of us. We're going right, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we can just follow the east star. Yeah, that ought to lead us to it, all right. How'd you find out about these folks, Grandpap? Well, Doc Miller and his woman ate dinner over at our place, and we were sitting there visiting after we got done eating, and the telephone rung and told Doc to get right over here. Well, uh, who done the calling? Oh, some feller named Joe something or another. Forget what he did call his name. He'd went over to some neighbor's house to call. Said they'd been into the county seat to pay their taxes, and there weren't no room at the hotel, so they come out here to this old barn to spend the night. Well, this ain't fitting weather to have to stay out in a barn. And they said they were sort of expecting the baby to be born tonight, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's the reason they called Doc Miller. Whee! <laughs> What's the matter, Abner? Oh, dog is my arms is getting tired. Well, here, let me carry them blankets a while, and you can carry this oil heater. Is that box of groceries getting heavy, Grandpap? No, I'm all right. We ought to be there directly anyhow. Yeah, sure, this snow tires a body out walking through it, you know it. Well, maybe we're walking a little fast for you, Abner. Here, you take the lantern. That'll help you see better. Yeah. Yeah, sir, it's mighty thoughty of you fellas to come over here at night this way. 
I sort of hate to call you to get out on Christmas, but after Doc left, why, me and the woman got to talking about how pitiful it was that that couple was having to stay out here in this barn with nothing to eat and all. Well, I'm just glad you called me, Grandpap. Just proud of a chance to help them. Yeah, this makes it seem more like Christmas to me, doing for somebody else. You know, you just can't do things to make others happy without making yourself happy at the same time. No, no. Trouble with a lot of us, we sort of lose the Christmas idea altogether. Think too much about ourselves. The real Christmas spirit is the happiness we get out of making others happy. Yeah. Well, there we was, sitting there at home. Thought we was enjoying ourselves. And these folks out here spending Christmas in a cold barn this way. Oh, well, there just wouldn't have been no Christmas to it if you hadn't have called us up, Grandpap. Well, I know I could depend on you fellas. Now, men, if it's the old Gaddis place, we ought to be able to see it from the top of this hill here. Wait a minute, I believe that's the barn yonder, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, that's where they're at. Well, now, that's due east from where we was at, all right, for there's the east star right over the top of the barn. Yeah. Yeah, there's Doc's horse tied to the fence there. Yeah, this is the place. See the light shining through the cracks in the walls? Well, sir, it's just a shame that them folks never let some of us know what they needed a place to stay. We've got plenty of room over at our place and just been glad to have had them. Well, this man that called Doc said they was looking for a place to stay and seen this barn weren't being used, so they just put up there for the night. Now, uh, whereabouts do they live, Grandpap, did he say? Yeah, they're from over about Pleasant Valley, Summers. He told Doc he never had no cash money and taken every nickel he had to pay his taxes, but said if he'd make the call, he'd work it out as quick as he could. Well, old Doc never refused a call in his life, I don't reckon. No, no. I've known him to get up in the dead of night in the worst kind of weather to go call on the sick when he knew before he went that he never would get no pay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we'd do without old Doc here in this community. Whilst there's some that says his methods is a little old-fashioned, but I grant he's all take my chances with him every time. And he's pulled me through the shatters time and again. I've always said that Doc never practiced medicine for what money he got out of it, as much as he does for the good that he can be to his fellow man. No, sir, if there ever was a man that's got a preserved seat in a better world, it's old Doc Miller. We better not be talking too loud, fellas. We don't want to disturb them none. No, no, let, let's all be as quiet as we can. Yeah, we got to let Doc know we're here some way or other. I reckon it won't hurt nothing to tap on the door sort of gentle. No, go ahead, Lon. They might be needing this oil stove. I don't hear a sound in there. I don't believe you knocked quite loud enough, Lon. Maybe they never heard you. Wait a minute. Here comes somebody to the door. Well, howdy, Doc. Oh, hello there. Well, what are you three old codgers doing out here this time of the night? Why, we just got to thinking after you left, Doc, these folks might be needing something. Yeah, uh, Doc, we brung an oil stove and some bed covers. And here's a box of groceries. Well, they're sure needing them. Haven't got any heat of any kind in there. Using what little hay was left in there for a bed, I took and piled it up in the manger, made a pretty good bed. But now these covers will just come in awful handy. How's the lady, Doc? Well, getting along as well as could be expected, I guess, Lum. I'll take these things on in and have her husband light this heater and warm the place up a little. Uh, you men had better stay out here for a little while. Oh, yeah, sure. You, you go ahead, Doc. We'll wait out here. If there's anything we can do, Doc, just let us know. That's all right, thank you. Oh, Doc, uh, what kind of work does this fella do? Why, uh... He said a while ago that he was a carpenter by trade, Lom. Uh, said he'd been out of work quite a while. Oh, well, here, I'd better get back in. Yeah. Said he was a carpenter, huh? Yeah, I was just thinking, Abner. We've been talking about building that loading platform at the back door of the store, and I think it's a pretty good idea to get this fella to help us. Yeah, that's a good idea, Lom. Might get him to do a little fixing up in the store, too, while he's at it. Well, he'll want to be nice wife and baby for a few days now. 
quick as Doc thinks it's safe for them to be moved, I'm going to insist on them coming right over there at our place and staying. Well, that'd be the best place in the world for them. Aunt Charity could take care of them better than anybody I know. Yeah, yeah she'd get a side of enjoyment out of looking after the baby. <laughs> Just loves children. Yeah. Well, that woman of yours, Grandpap, has mothered every youngin' in the community. Well, sir, I was just thinking here. <laughs> here we are, three old codgers, getting along in years, standing around out here waiting. Waiting for a little baby to be born. Sort of like as if we was waiting for somebody to take our place. Well, of course, we don't like to talk about such things, but... We've about solved our time, I reckon. It won't be long before we'll have to move on and turn the reins over to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> They'll soon forget about us. Yeah, it's sort of like the years. Here the old years almost gone. There's been lots of things happen, but they'll soon be forgot. There's been lots of joys and happiness. On the other hand, there's been lots of heartaches and lots of hopes. That never come true. But there's a new year coming, bringing new hope and new courage. And we're sort of like the years, us three old fellers. We're sort of like the old year going out, and we're waiting on the new year. The little baby in yonder. Well, it's just like I've always said. Well, wait a minute. Wait, I believe somebody's coming to the door. Oh, maybe it's Doc. Any news yet, Doc? Well, men, it's a fine baby boy. came to pass that a little child was born on December 25th in an old barn in the countryside near the peaceful little community of Pine Ridge. Friends, we hope you enjoyed this Lum and Abner's traditional Christmas story. May the spirit of peace and goodwill which it brings remain with you through the years to come. This is the Christmas wish for you and yours from Lum and Abner and Frigidaire, from the Frigidaire dealer in your own community who is ready to serve you all the time, and from yours truly, Wendell Niles. The new Lum and Abner show is brought to you each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer and the Frigidaire division of General Motors, manufacturers of a complete line of home appliances, air conditioners, and commercial refrigeration equipment. Our special music was by Felix Mills and his orchestra and the Mitchell Boy Choir. So until next Sunday night, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles saying good night for Frigidaire, America's number one refrigerator. Merry Christmas, Merry everybody. Christmas. This is CBS. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. 
We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love, only at David's Bridal.